So I'm on a quest to find out why I haven't cruised celebrity. Today, we're going to look at Celebrity Beyond's Caribbean itineraries and find out if any of these could work. Hey, welcome to This Is The Cruise. I'm Clint, and this is the channel where we look at upcoming cruise itineraries and try to find out if this is the cruise for you. This is part two of my Celebrity Caribbean itinerary reviews, and today we're looking at the Celebrity Beyond. In part one, I covered Celebrity Apex and Celebrity Ascents itineraries. Plus, I discussed some of the ins and outs of how I do my scoring, and I also took a deeper look into some of the stops that we could take on those itineraries. I'm not going to do that quite to the same extent as I did in part one. If you're interested in finding out more about some excursion options and some things to do in the Caribbean, definitely go back and watch that. Plus, that video covers two Edge class ship itineraries, and Celebrity Beyond is an Edge class ship. So they're definitely related. But I want to know, do you prefer when I do a deeper dive into the stops and some of the excursions you could take and some ideas? Or would you prefer me just to focus on the itineraries and get to the point? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Speaking of comments below and all the things that we should do as part of the YouTube cruiser community, I'd really appreciate it if you like and subscribe the video. It's really helping me grow the channel. And if I have helped you find the itinerary that's just right for you, consider buying me a cup of coffee using the safe and secure link in the description below. It helps me improve what I'm trying to do here and the quality of the videos. It's also a great way to say thanks and it's literally like buying me a cup of coffee. If you want to get some behind the scenes look into what I'm doing, consider becoming a member. I'm growing, like I said, I'm growing the channel out and for just a dollar a month, you can become a member and get access to videos sooner as well as some other perks like discounted merch from my merch store. So check that out and I really appreciate it. Let's jump in. So real quick, let's take a look at Celebrity Beyond the ship and see how she compares. So as I mentioned, she's an edge class ship and currently those kind of come in two sizes. She's on the bigger size. There's the there's the roughly 130 gross ton edge class. Those are the smaller ones. The one, the edge that was built in 2018 and the apex that was built in 2021. We have the beyond and ascent. Those come in at 140,000, a little bit over 140,000 gross tons. She also has the larger passenger capacity at almost 4,000 people, 3,900 or so. And she also has more rooms at 1,646 just like her counterpart, The Ascent. Okay, so Celebrity Beyond is doing a number of Caribbean itineraries in the 2024-2025 cruise season, and they kind of break down into four primary categories. We have the Western itineraries, those are six and seven days, and I discovered something interesting about those. Stay tuned for that. We have the Eastern itineraries. Those also come in at six or seven day itineraries. There's definitely one I recommend avoiding there in those in that group. Then we have the southern itineraries. Those are all 10 day itineraries with the exception of one itinerary and maybe one to avoid in there as well. And then we have the Panama Canal portion of itineraries that the Beyond is doing all in the same season. Those are all 11 days and there's some nuanced differences with the canal itineraries that I want to point out that may help you make some decisions there as well. So let's jump right into the Western itineraries. Okay, so where do the Western Caribbean itineraries go? Well, we could go to Bimini or Coco Cay. Those are going to be your, your Bahama stops. And then to make it Western Caribbean, we're going to jump over to Cozumel and we're going to go to Grand Cayman. All three itineraries that we're going to look at go to Cozumel, go to Grand Cayman, and then go to either Coco Cay or Bimini. Interestingly, technically there are three distinct itineraries that Beyond is doing in the Western Caribbean category. The weakest one, and the one I'd probably avoid, is called the Bahamas, Mexico, and Caymans. She's only cruising this one date. It's October 13th, 2024. And the reason I'm gonna recommend avoiding it is because, I mean, like I said, they're calling it the Bahamas, Mexico, and Caymans, but you don't know which Bahama Island it's going to until you dig in a little bit. This one's cruising to Bimini instead of Coco Cay, 
And that's those two islands, while they're both in the Bahamas, aren't even close. Now, Coco Cay is the private island for Royal Caribbean. Um, and if you aren't aware, celebrities of Royal Caribbean cruise, it's kind of their upscale Royal Caribbean cruise line. And Coco Cay is an awesome island. It is private. It is, you are a captive audience, so everything you do there is, you know, funneling money back into the Royal Caribbean Corporation, but the experience is so much better than Bimini. And that's kind of unfortunate. Bimini looks like it should be a beautiful little spit of land, but it's it's not great. If you love beaches, very nice beaches. If you love getting into the water, very nice snorkeling and scuba potential there. In fact, I have a friend who just got back and it was her least favorite stop. They went to both uh, Coco Cay and Bimini and NASA, and it was her least favorite stop there. And she said that her fiance actually brought his fishing pole and they went fishing, which I thought was an interesting idea. I hadn't considered that as a way to pass time, but I'm gonna kind of put that in my back pocket and I have some better destinations if fishing is your thing, but that's an interesting idea. So all that to say, the one to avoid is the Bahamas, Mexico and Cayman itinerary that leaves on October 13th. This gets a Clint's cruisability score of 16.88 and it is significantly weaker than all of the other Celebrity Beyond itineraries on offer. The other two sailings are actually the same itinerary. It's just one is a six day and one's a seven day. And they both are called the Western Caribbean and Perfect Day. From a scoring perspective and the purpose of this channel, I am looking to maximize the itinerary stops. How often are we spending time visiting new places versus how often are we spending time at sea? These are beautiful, amazing, upscale resort ships. So it's not bad to have an extra sea day. However, the algorithm that I use to score puts a heavier weight on stops than it does sea days. So the six day actually gets a 17.7 .7 versus the seven day at a 17.2. But remember, these are the same exact stops. You're just spending an extra day at sea on the longer one. The longer one, the six day, departs October 27th and the seven day departs November 2nd. So really, how do you decide between the two? Well, I mean, I'm always going to take a longer cruise over a shorter cruise, even if I'm not in port. But if there's a price difference and if the date works better, let's say you have kind of that last few days of October into early November off, and that's when you can take your vacation. Well, that's when you go. Are you going to miss out? You're certainly not going to miss out on ports. You're just going to miss out on an extra day at sea. So whichever one of those works for you, they're the same itinerary. Okay. So let's move on then to the Eastern Caribbean. You're going to have two variations of Eastern Caribbean cruises here, either Porta Plata, Haiti, Labadee, and the Bahamas, or we could have Porta Plata and the Virgin Islands. So let's, let's take a look at these. So we have one maybe to avoid here. It's the six night Porta Plata and Bahamas. It's actually called Porta Plata and NASA. So we're going to visit NASA Bahamas and Labadee, Haiti. Labadee's beautiful. The problem is, is that right now with all the unrest in Haiti, we don't know if we're going to be going to Haiti. And in fact, my friend who I mentioned earlier, they didn't go to Labadee. They made a detour and went to Bimini, which is not an upgrade. So they actually had three stops in the Bahamas. And with this itinerary, it likely could happen to you too, where you go from Fort Lauderdale to Nassau, Bahamas, to Bimini, down to Dominican Republic, Porta Plata and back. That's not great. So I'm thinking I'm going to try to avoid this one, but I want to be heard kind of loud and clear. Virtually any cruise is better than no cruise. So, you know, if you're booked on that one, enjoy it. It's going to be great, but there may be better options if, if these dates and times work for you. This has one sailing on November 9th and it gets a Clint's cruisability score of 17.96. There's also the six night Porta Plata, Labadee and Perfect Day. Now that's an upgrade, right? This one goes to Perfect Day and goes to Coco Cay instead of NASA. And NASA is on the government do not travel list. And cruise lines are basically saying, hey, we're going to stop here in NASA. Don't go beyond this street in the city because it gets to be very unsafe. There's lots of gang violence there. Now, staying near the port, going into the water and kind of going away from the city actually is a, a wonderful experience there. I've been to NASA a number of times and had a great time. If 
I was on this itinerary, we probably wouldn't even be getting off the ship. The ship is so nice. Um, we may just get on land and be like, yeah, we visited NASA and then we'd get right back on. I don't know. We'd be spending more time on the ship though. So not loving this itinerary either. This has one sailing actually on April 28th. So it's later in the season, April 28th, 2025. So it's later in the season. This one gets a Clint's cruisability score of 19.2. And to be honest, Coco K really carries this one. It really carries the score. Porta Plata combined with Coco K is wonderful. Labadee is also great, but that's again assuming that we're going to be stopping there. So I have questions about how this one turns out or will turn out. I did mention that we have the Porta Plata and Virgin Islands itinerary. This one is actually called the Eastern Caribbean itinerary. So if you're looking it up on Royal Caribbean's website, it's called Eastern Caribbean. This one's going to go to Porta Plata, St. Thomas, and then St. Martin. It's a seven day itinerary where you have three ports and three sea days. That's not great for a variety score in my scale. And it has one sailing on November 25th. This is actually over Thanksgiving this year, which would be kind of a nice way to celebrate the holidays. It does mean that the cruise is going to be a little bit more expensive. This one gets a Clint's cruisability score of 18.43, and that's because the weight of Coco K isn't fat isn't a factor here. However, I would be picking this one over the others. Now, of course, there are other cruise lines, and even Celebrity has other ships sailing at this time of year. So if Thanksgiving is your your time, you have options to pick. But for this ship, going to this part of the world, I would pick the Eastern Caribbean itinerary. But wait, there are other itineraries that Celebrity Beyond is doing. Let's take a look at those. Up next, we have the Southern Caribbean itineraries. And there are two kind of main variations here. We have the ones that go down to the ABC Islands. Those are eight day itineraries, and there's a couple of those. And then we have the ones that go to the Lesser Antilles, the southeastern portion, but it's really Southern, technically considered Southern Caribbean, the Lesser Antilles Islands. Those are longer 10 day cruises. So there's the Aruba, Bonaire, and Curacao eight-day cruises that visit the ABC Islands, Aruba, Bonaire, and Curacao. Those have two sailing dates, October 5th and October 19th. They're selling out quickly. We're looking at the inside rooms and ocean view rooms that are pretty much left. Pretty much all the balcony rooms are sold out. And then we have sort of the very top tier rooms also being available. For an eight day cruise that gets really expensive. And I will say this, there is not much to see when you cruise here. The islands are flat. They're very pretty when you get off, but they're not mountainous. It's not like you're pulling into fjords. I would argue you don't need the balconies for these itineraries. In fact, we did an ABC cruise, a 10 day, uh, had more stops than three on this, but we did a, a, a Southern Caribbean cruise that visited Aruba, Bonaire, and Curacao, and we had an interior room, an inside room, and we had a blast. It was a great cruise. You don't need the balcony on these. Anyway, anyway, I digress. If you've got the budget, enjoy it. These have a three ports to four sea day ratio. That's because we're going so far south in such a short amount of time. It takes two days to get there and two days to get back. There isn't time to stop unless you go on a nine or 10 day cruise. Then you can get one or two more stops in, which is absolutely possible on these itineraries. However, Celebrity is just getting you down to Aruba, Bonaire and Curacao and getting you back. These get a Clint's cruisability score of 17.29. I love those islands, but it's a lot of sea days just for three stops. Then Celebrity has what they refer to as ultimate Southern Caribbean itineraries. It's some combination of these lesser Antilles islands. All the itineraries visit St. Martin, Antigua, and Barbados. And then you get some variation of St. Lucia, Grenada, and Dominica. The top scorer of these itineraries leaves on March 7th and visits St. Martin, Antigua, Dominica, and Grenada. This itinerary gets a Clint's Cruisability score of 25.29. I'm going to tell you why I would struggle picking this itinerary at the end. Stay tuned for that. The lowest scoring itinerary visits St. Martin, St. Lucia, Grenada, Barbados, Antigua, and scores a 25.06. That's 
less than a quarter of a point less. So honestly, any of the ultimate Southern Caribbean itineraries are really, really great. So before I tell you why I might choose a different itinerary than the topic, let's take a look at the Panama Canal itineraries first. So when it comes to Panama Canal, there are two variations of itineraries that Celebrity Beyond is doing. All of them visit Cartagena, Colombia, Cristobal, Cologne, or Cologne, Panama, Aruba, and Bonaire. Two sailings visit the Grand Cayman, which is more in the Western Caribbean, and five sailings substitute Grand Cayman for Curacao. So those five sailings visit all three of the ABC islands, and then two of the sailings give you a little bit of a different feel by going to Grand Cayman instead. The scores are very similar between the two sailings at 23.51 for the one that visits Grand Cayman and 23.84 for the one that visits Curacao. And just like the scores bear out, I would actually prefer the one that goes to Curacao over Grand Cayman. I like Grand Cayman. It's a nice island. It's actually one of the islands that we went to on our honeymoon many years ago. Um, and we had a great time there. We've been there a few times. It's, it's wonderful. Uh, the reason I would want to go to Curacao over Grand Cayman, honestly, is because it's harder to get to. And when you're down in the Aruba, Bonaire, Curacao region, if you can get to it, go to it. It's a beautiful city, beautiful town to walk around Willemstead there, and I, I really, really like it. So because of the um, novelty of being a little bit further away from Fort Lauderdale, having that extra stop down there is nice. I will say the advantage of doing the Grand Cayman stop is that you have two days at sea to start the itinerary. You then go to Aruba and Bonaire, or Bonaire and Aruba, I think is the order. Then you visit Cartagena, you go through the Panama, you, you visit the Panama Canal and Panama, and then you, then you have a sea day on your way up to Grand Cayman before your final sea day back to Fort Lauderdale. That's a nice way to break up the stops. Whereas the, the itinerary that visits Curacao has two sea days down. You go back to back to back to back with all your stops and then you have two sea days back, which, which is fine. It's the same number of sea days. It's just kind of how the itinerary itself is broken up. Is either one better than the other? Not necessarily. And you can see in the scores, they're very, very close. So really you can kind of pick the one that works for you. But when it comes time for us to book our Panama Canal cruise, would I pick any of these itineraries and honestly i have to say i wouldn't and here's why first off when my wife and i do finally do a panama canal cruise we've been putting it off because there's a lot of cruises out there to see we actually want to go on one that traverses the entire canal we'll start in fort lauderdale or san diego and end in the on the opposite part of the country so going from fort lauderdale over to san diego sounds amazing None of these do that. They just go into the canal, go into Gadden Lake, turn around and come back out. That's fine because you get to do a portion of the canal, but you don't actually go through the whole canal. And I, I would really like to do that. And it, another reason, if my research is correct, is that Celebrity Beyond is actually too large to fit into the old canal. They've you know, built a new canal for larger ships and to allow more traffic, which is great for commerce and, and for those on larger ships to be able to, to visit the area. But unfortunately, you miss out on the history and the tightness and kind of it's it's really looks amazing to be on that small canal going through on these ships that really feel like they should be too big to fit through you won't have quite that same experience and you don't get quite the same history that you do get on the older canal. If I'm wrong on this though, correct me, it's a little bit ambiguous as to where the beyond would fit, but it looks to me like it may be too big to go through the old canal. Finally, the other reason is that there's a lot of enrichment in the experience of cruising the Panama Canal if you can really experience the canal. Sort of a, like I mentioned with the size of the ship, Celebrity doesn't open up the bow of the ship to go out and watch it from the front. You can go up to the spa deck and see it from there, but depending on how they're operating the spa, you may not have access to the spa deck unless you get a spa pass. So again, let me know if I don't quite have that right, but from the research I'm seeing, it looks like that's how they operate. And I, I would really like to, to have that experience as well. 
So let me know, have you cruised the Panama Canal? And if so, which lock did you go through? Did you go through the, the old one or did you go through the new one? Were you able to go up into the bow of the ship or not? And what ship were you on? And how was it? Let me know in the comments below. I'd really like to hear from you. Okay, so, so which one can I say this is the cruise? Well, we looked at Western, we looked at Eastern, we looked at Southern and we looked at Panama Canal. We talked about why I went to Panama Canal and the Western, the Western Caribbean cruises leave a bit to be desired. There is that one Eastern Caribbean cruise that does get us down to St. Thomas and St. Martin. That's an interesting one, but a one-to-one -one port to sea day ratio isn't great for a seven day itinerary, particularly because you can get seven day cruises that go down to the Virgin Islands and have four stops on other ships. So I still haven't figured out why. So here's yet one more reason why we haven't cruised Celebrity yet, but I'm not done exploring all the itineraries. When it comes to Southern itineraries, we definitely have some great options, right? All the ultimate Southern Caribbean cruises are great, except for the ones that go to the ABC islands, unfortunately. So which one would I pick? Well, I'm really torn on this one because we really like new destinations. I mean, that's the whole that was the whole catalyst for this channel was to talk about ways that you can experience more of the world through cruising. And in order to do that, the itinerary is such a huge factor. Of those ultimate Southern Caribbean itineraries, there are three islands we haven't visited. St. Martin, which is a little bit shocking because we've been to the Caribbean so many times and yet we still haven't been to St. Martin. We've not been to Dominica. That's an island that fewer cruises go to. And we've not been to Grenada. And Grenada is an important one for me because I have a nephew from Grenada and I'd really like to go visit where he's from. Looking at these itineraries, Grenada becomes a must do. We gotta go to Grenada. I've never been to Dominica, so I really should add that one. We're gonna get St. Martin because all of the itineraries go to St. Martin, so we can check that off the list. But my favorite Caribbean island to date is St. Lucia, and I've been there. The problem is, is that you can't do St. Lucia and Dominica at the same time. It's either Dominica or St. Lucia if you're going to go to Grenada. <laughs> so you can start to see the, the challenge here and really what becomes the most important and deciding factor for us when we're picking an itinerary aside from date and who we're traveling with and the budget. Where are we going? Have we been there already? Is it someplace new? So. Is it the cruise for you? Maybe, maybe not. The cruise for you is most likely, if I was picking a cruise for you, is most likely the one that goes to the places you haven't been. But maybe you're the kind of person that loves to go to the places you have been and it's a known quantity. It's a place where you're comfortable and you can relax and unwind because you know what you're gonna get when you go to that place. We like the adventure of going to a new place and sometimes we're disappointed in those new places. That's okay. We got to check it off the list. We've been there, we had that experience. So the cruise where I say, this is the cruise, is the one that goes to St. Martin, Antigua, Dominica, Grenada, and it's the top scoring itinerary. But I sure do love St. Lucia and horseback riding on the beach with your significant other, so romantic. Highly, highly recommend it. So March 7th, 2025 on Celebrity Beyond, is looking like the most viable option for my first celebrity cruise. But remember, when, who you're traveling with, and your budget, certainly for me, are maybe the biggest factors. I haven't looked at the prices of this yet, and I don't know if I can get PTO. You know, I gotta take off work, like what I would think most of you have to do as well. So I'll keep you posted. And with that, see you next time. Oh,